Dr. Doom is here today because today we're going to take a look at the fantastic four plug and play unit made by Jack Specific. It has three buttons up here all clumped together, A, B, and C. I like this kind of see-through bubble on top with the fantastic four emblem. And you have a little thing in the corner too and he feels nice and rubbery. You can even kind of move his eyebrows a little bit, make him look like he's thinking or pondering something. And let's see, it runs on four AA batteries. And, oh, it also has a game key slot. They were planning on making cartridges for some of their games that would enable you to play with extra levels or extra games in certain units, but they never made any game keys for the Fantastic Four version, and you can see your menu button on off switch, and it's your standard single uh, audio and uh, video cable there for your composite thing. So anyway, let's go ahead, take the Fantastic Four plug and play, plug it in, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Grrr. The Fantastic Four Plug and Play was made by Jack Specific and carries a copyright year of 2005, the same year that 20th Century Fox released the Fantastic Four movie. The Fantastic Four Plug and Play contains a single player action game that's reminiscent of a lower grade 16 bit game from the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo era. The game itself has three modes of difficulty and allows you to select any member of the Fantastic Four to play with at the beginning of the game. Each member has four levels to play through and the game automatically saves your progress after every level you complete so you don't have to complete the game in a single sitting. For the most part, each character controls the same, using the joystick to move, one button to attack, one to jump, and another button for defense. Although, really, who's going to use defense in an action game like this? Thankfully, the game tells you how to control each character before each level. Each character also has a unique special ability that can be performed by pressing the B and C buttons together. The Human Torch and Invisible Woman also have the ability to fly by holding the jump button down while airborne. Each character has a life bar and a special ability bar. Most characters, except the Thing, tend to use up their special ability bars simply by performing normal actions. However, once the bar is empty, you can still perform these actions, which is somewhat confusing. The Thing, however, only uses his special ability bar when he uses his special attack. There are power-ups to gain more health, more special ability power, and extra lives. If your life bar goes all the way down to zero, the game will allow you to fight for a little bit longer, but if you take enough hits, you will lose a life and the game will put you back a little bit in the level that you're on. If you happen to lose all your lives, your game will end. However, you can restart the game with only a single life left. This might make it difficult to complete for some players. However, I was fortunate enough to defeat the game without losing all of my lives on normal difficulty. Occasionally, your character may find themselves in a special level. For instance, the Human Torch and Invisible Woman have levels that they have to fly through, whereas Mr. Fantastic and The Thing have levels where the thing bounces Mr. Fantastic in a ball shape for him to hit the enemies. At the end of the four levels for each of the characters is a boss battle. When you defeat all the levels for all four characters for a total of 16 levels, two final levels will open up. The first final level is a bland vertically scrolling shooter, and the second one features a boss battle between Mr. Fantastic and Doctor Doom. If you're able to defeat Doctor Doom, you'll be treated to a single congratulations screen, which, spoiler alert, I will show at the end of this review. Both the graphics and the sound are a step up from your typical NES game, but not quite as good as a Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo game in my opinion, and honestly, they didn't really impress me. Family friendly wise, the game is rated E10 and up for ages 10 and older due to animated violence. At the time my research on eBay, the Fantastic Four plug and play could be had for about $10 including shipping. However, my guess is if you found this at a thrift store or garage sale, it would probably be more like five bucks or less. So what did I think of the Fantastic Four plug and play unit? Well, overall, I wasn't very impressed, especially with the typical action levels. For one thing, they had a very weird mechanic when climbing ladders. When you touch a ladder, you can press up to climb it, but to get to the level above, you must jump when you get to the top of the ladder, which felt kind of clumsy. There are also several parts of the game where you had to make difficult jumps just right, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of those. Finally, the action level simply had too many occurrences where it froze you in an area and spammed a lot of enemies over and over again until you defeated them all to move on. This might have been okay once or twice in the game, but the game had this happening multiple times in each of the action levels themselves, which was way too much and seemed like a cheap way to extend the game itself. 
Personally, I thought the best part of the game was some of the special levels, especially the one where Thing bounces Mr. Fantastic like a ball hitting the enemies. I would have much preferred it if they would have added more unique levels like this and cut down on the action levels. Finally, I found the joystick itself to be quite uncomfortable after playing for a little while. So where am I going to rank the Fantastic Four plug and play unit? Well, I'd rather play Wheel of Fortune at 9, but I would rather give this one another go than the poorly performing Activision TV games plug and play at number 10. So out of the 13 plug and play systems I've reviewed so far, Fantastic Four is falling in at the 10 position. Fantastic Four? Well, more like the flimsy four. At this time, I'd like to thank forum member JM Justin 6 over at the forums at Atari.io for trading me this plug and play unit so I could review it on my show. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoy retro related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons? You can also follow me both on the Facebook and Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. You can find more retro podcasts and videos at theretrojunkies.com. And you can support the show on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash gamer for more information. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care, everybody.